Special guests flying through here on Two Call TV, man. Thank you guys for tuning in, man. I fuck with you guys. Do you train people? Yes or no? Yes, I do, sir. Shoot me your number and your location, man. We can talk business. But hey, man. Good morning. How you guys doing this morning, man? You guys got your trees? Do you guys got your questions? If you ain't got no trees, then shoot. I got mine. Shoot. You feel me? What's happening though? Happy holidays. I'm so proud of those. Alright. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. What made you want to fight? No, you agree. Get your face together. What's happening, bro? Yeah. H Town in the building. But yes, man, I have this today is um a powerful little day, man. I got I got women, MMA fighters that's tuning and you know, you guys I got some women fighters that's gonna fly through here, man. Hopefully they has got time. I'm still getting myself together. I just woke up. If y'all can't see it, you know, I got the uh, eye boogers in my face. You feel me? Yeah, Two Cold TV. Like, for real, for real. What's happening, man? I wanted on them to get they self together. Right now, we still a little early. I got Miranda Maverick, Fear of the Maverick, coming through from the UFC. She made her debut last October. And she just... Ran through her competition, bro. She, man, she's official. I'm hoping she can get come through. And I have my homegirls, Lily and Liz from the Wolves Den, is coming through. They are amateur kickboxing champs. Man, bro, I'm just excited with this whole little setup I got going on, you know. And just thank God, you feel me? Because in that, like, shit, it wouldn't be possible without him, you feel me? Amen. But, you know, if you guys got any questions, man, y'all can hit me up, talk to me until I get them together. I'm a little early, but shit, I'm a little late also. But, you know what I'm saying? We here. We doing this shit. You feel me? Hopefully, you guys have a little, huh? My baby. But shit, you guys, man. Let me see if I can find them. Right, right now. But yes, you guys, y'all, man, I thank you guys for tuning in, man. We got this shit. Hopefully, y'all got some questions. Hopefully, y'all got some answers. Hopefully, y'all just, you know. How was you guys' holidays? You know what I'm saying? I call it days because, like, shit, it felt like hell is because y'all went to, like, hella places at one time. You feel me? Shoot. I was supposed to have Miranda around 11. Right now, I'm trying to get my uh, some of my people to come through right now on the live so I can get them the views and get them to see some things. Other than that, how you guys doing this morning, man? I appreciate the tune in. I appreciate you guys for even watching me. appreciate you guys for just flooding me real quick. You know what I'm saying? This for the stones and the stones. Definitely for an instrument. I'm here.
will punch the clock. Saying he is old, get a nigga get shot. Damn. Pussy ass nigga turning on his own fam. The same nigga that just you break your neck for. What's happening? Good morning. This is Tuco TV, man. I got my random Mavericks. I have some local MMA fighters, pro kickboxers, amateur kickboxers dropping on the end of my show, man. We can get this shit cracking, man. I'm just here early. That's my job. Just skip town with 300,000. Y'all just put an agent in the clear They say, Doc, we beat the two streets just like it's popped. This is my morning waking bank, so. It is what it is. But yes, man, it's 2 Cold TV. I'm glad you guys tuned in. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Rolling them out, man. Hop on the line. Smoking on that CBD flower. This shit about gone already. Damn bitch, you can't shoot up. You see it, set you off. I don't think I trust that it's love. All the thing I trust is because we ain't in my hood. Uh-oh, King Crab's in the building. The Jennies. King Crab in the building from Jennies. District area. What's happening, you guys, man? Appreciate you guys for tuning in on 2 Cold TV. I got some special guests following in. So yeah, if you just passing through, that's cool too, man. You know what I'm saying? But it's a wake and bake all oh, wake and bake session real quick. Too cold. Try the one from Cookies. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. She in the building. She in the building. She in the building. Let's see if I can add him. Good morning, though. Hopefully, you got a good day. Okay, you guys. I got one of my guests coming in. Uh oh. Uh oh. She's in. What's happening? What? What? Uh oh, her service right, breaking. Get it together, get it together. Uh -oh. I'm getting it together. She gotta get it together. Let's just go to the garage. Okay, well, we gotta sit here. Get it together, Lily. Get it together. Gangsta in the building. What's Yo. up? Hey, you guys, man. We have St. Louis, the Midwest, best kickboxing couple, MMA couple. <laughs> man, this overall period couple in the, the, in the man, bro. Y'all just met this shit to me. And y'all motivate me. So tell the world who you guys are and let you guys run out y'all resume. <laughs> Uh, my name is Lily. They call me Lily Princess around here. This is my wife, Liz. Liz, Liz just said, forget about it. How you guys doing? Sorry, I was chewing. She's having you a eat, morning. Oh, you eat, you eat some leftover, Liz? No. No, I ate all the food. I can't have no more of that food. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> All right, man. Look, man. This, this. Hey, I appreciate you guys coming on here, man. We can chop it up, man. Do it, whatever. Y'all got any questions for me? Y'all can ask me some. I can ask you guys some. But my my question starting off to both of you guys, man. What was it like starting out? Because we, I know y'all 
outside of, you know, here and shit like that. But how was it when you guys started your career? What was your mindset? What was the position in life you guys was in? You feel me? Like, you know, feel, you know, let some people know. Um, let's see. So I, I actually, um, <laughs> so for real, like I was like 200 pounds and, uh, I had some like health stuff going on. And so really I just started working out to lose weight. Yeah. And I started run. I, I lost a bunch of weight. My coach, I don't know. I want to say like I was six months in and he was like, why don't you, uh, do this, uh, smoker fight? It was just a boxing fight. Right. So I was like, all right, you know, fuck it. Let's do it. And, uh, man, I it was the scariest thing I ever did in my life. For real. When I got done, I was like, I don't ever want to fight again. <laughs> I was so scared. I remember uh, he was like, it'll be just like sparring. And, like, he put me in there, and she started hitting me. I was like, this is not like sparring at all. <laughs> um. And so, really, like, I didn't fight again for a year. I just trained, and I had this women's class that I did on the weekends, and that's how I met her. She started coming to women's class, and and then she was the one that was like, I think you should fight again. And don't it, don't so that be like, wasn't, wasn't my bad because, you know, wasn't that, like, the awkwardest moment ever in your life? You were like, hold on, bro. Like, I just fought you. <laughs> like, I just fought you. Like, how the hell... <laughs> This is oh no, I, I didn't fight Lily. No, I just met her like, in a like a women's training. Like I was the. Uh -oh. Have technical difficulties, you guys. Yeah. Say it again. I said no. I didn't fight Lily. She joined like the women's class to like get fit or whatever, and like I was the coach, I and and like we started dating, and then she was like. Oh, I, you know, like, you seem to really like this, so I think you should fight, you know. I think you should fight again. So then I was like, all right, I'm going to try it out again. And I fought, and I won. I fought this, like, tough chick out of Chicago. And I remember just being like, maybe this is what I like to do. So that's how it all got started. I started boxing. So my original, my first 14 fights were all boxing fights. So basically, Lily, your story is in the same sense of her story in the beginning, right? Well, I just joined, yeah, I just, I was, I just joined to, like, do something to, like, athletic. I had, I was in college, and I was always, like, an athlete through school, and I just wanted to do something to get fit, and I joined the uh, women's, like, cardio kickboxing class, and I had the hots for the boxing coach over here, mm -hmm. and so I wanted to come to all the classes, because she was at all the classes, um, but then I really just... I really just fell in love with it. And my coach was like, do you want to fight? And I was like, fuck yeah, let's do it for real. And then I was hooked. <laughs> you remember Lily's first fight, right? She fought uh, Chelsea. Chelsea Johnson. That was her first fight. She did. She did. She did. She did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> that, was oh. that was Lily's first fight. I remember, fight. but like, I crossed the look. I so I mistaken. I mistaken. I mistaked the, um, Lily for that one girl that she fought after. Like, she had blonde. You, had, you ain't have blonde. No. Nah, nah. Yeah, she had blonde hair. Yeah, I had blonde hair. Yeah. And you, you. Yeah, that was me. That's, never mind. Never mind. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, that's what's up, man. Like, man, that's how small the white community is in St. Louis. Very though, small. Right? Real, real talk, like that's how real small it is though in the community here in the fight MMA world. This fight community period here in St. Louis, like majority of everybody, they almost trying to talk to somebody. Like for real, there's some weird ass stuff. Like for real, like <laughs> that's what they, that's what we it's talk about. Like it's like that oh, everywhere. Shit. Like uh, we travel and train oh, and compete everywhere, all over the United States, and like all our circles run in other circles. Like, it's crazy. Like, we could be all the way, you know, like, in Chicago, and people be like, oh, I know who you are, you know? and Or we have, you know, friends in Georgia that know our friends in Michigan, you know? And, like, it's crazy. All right, bro. Now, my wife got a joke. No, my bet you come, because... Oh. You see how I look right now? Whatever. <laughs> 
whatever. But it is a small, 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 small world here in this in this little community. You feel me? Like it's just okay. no, it's, bro. Like for real, for real. Like I forgot that she even that was on Gateway, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Damn. Yeah. Whew. I forgot all about that. G guys, man. But no, nah, man. Uh, one quick second. I'm sorry. All right. I written down some questions for you guys. Well, right there. I'm gonna ask these other questions one before I get uh Miranda, uh, on the live too. But like, you know, what do you guys think is uh, it, what do you guys think is harder for women to break through? in the fight community and like MMA, boxing, kickboxing, or this, you know, organization wise, like, do you guys feel like it's harder or is it easier? Easier than versus men? No, versus it's, like other sports? Versus other sports? Just in general, y'all views on it? Um, I think it's hard for women because there's not, in fighting, because there's not a big pool. Right. You know, there's, very it's it's still smaller than the guys there's a lot less opponents and then you know you got to find the weight and the matchup so it's just there's not a big pool so we have to travel and we just have to like put ourselves out there more so it is challenging um just being a, a woman in the sport definitely starting out and getting your name out there you feel this you feel the same way liz Everything about being a woman in the sport is really hard. You know, like, we're just surrounded by men. Men don't take you seriously. You know, like, um, it's hard to find, you know, you always got to be careful with your sparring partners because you're always smaller at a weaker, you know, disadvantage. And even though, like, like me, like, I like to fight. I like to bang. But, you know, if I'm sparring against you, you know, like, that's a scary situation. I have to be careful. You know, not because you will hurt me, but just because in general, like, you're a stronger, bigger man. And then, you know, there's, like, how well does it help me prepare for my actual fights? Because when I hit a grown man, he don't move back, you know? So I don't really learn about things like that, you know? Like, so just wow. in, in general, we have to figure out how to translate everything. And then we have each other, but there's a, there's a size difference between us as well. So, like, I'm bigger than Lily, obviously. So, you know, it's just, it's, it's a challenge. And then finding opponents, you know, you, like, you just feel like you're, you you got the same pool of girls all over the United States. There's not many of us. Like, I know most of the high-level 125 kickboxers around the United States, you know. Like, I know who's above me. I know who's where I'm at, you know. I know who's under me, you know, experience-wise. So, like, I just feel like it's real hard. And then girls, like, they don't want to fight, too. There's a lot of girls that, like, they want to fight, but they don't want to fight people like me who have a lot of <laughs> like a lot of girls I you know and I hate to say it, a lot of girls just want to win they don't want to fight you know and so like that's a that's a challenge as well you know so I don't know it's, it's, it's difficult I think that in you know in the aspect of like mental challenges and things like that I think we go through the same stuff as boys go through but boys aren't as vocal about it so like over the years I've learned that men also have like all the like insecurities and fears and anxieties but they just don't talk about it and we're yeah. more external with that stuff so like people perceive us to be weaker man i feel you because like i ain't going to reflect when i first like i was like me personally i was thrown to the wolves like literally like like for real for real like when i started my fight career man like they threw my ass to the wolves like i had to pray with nothing but pro fighters nothing but pros like, I, sh I was training with Sean back when he was, like, an amateur. And he was, like, he had his hands, like, for real, for real then. But now he got it even more. But, like, Sean was beat up on me when I was, like, 1-0. and 0, And I was like, dude, like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, man. Like, come on. Man. But when I first, like, went met with you and spar, like, uh, try to spar with you, I was like, Man, she gonna knock my motherfucking head off. Like for real, for real. But at the same time, mentally, as a pro and just as a person in general, I know I'm here to work. I know I'm here to learn something. So I'm not trying to beat up on someone because I got personal issues going on at home, if that makes sense. And yeah. like like dude, like this it, like it was a few times I was like, I'm not going, you know. I got you. I got you. Like you know, you can tell the you know real fighters know the difference between their powers and when 
you know, certain people try to be on extra shit, you know? And that's why when I, like, I, I mean, like, when I always used to come out there, I used to be like, man, I I know she an awesome ass kickboxer because I need, I need, I need to work with her. But I was just like, nah, because she might not want to work with me because she might think I'm too big. And then that was that one time when you said, like, no, you hella big. I was like, how dare you? <laughs> I mean, really, we're just hella small, so. <laughs> no, but for real, so, like, I'm always, like, super careful, and I always remind men, because it's not because I don't trust you necessarily, you personally, but, like, okay, so I've only been knocked out once in my life, and for real, I'm not going to say his name, but it's a grown-ass man from this community, and, like, he said the same thing, like, he was sparring kind of hard with another girl, and then he asked to go with me, and I was like, no, I'm good, and he was like, I'm a, you know, I'm a coach, I, you know, I'm not going to hurt you. Um, and then when we start going, like, I start touching him a little bit. I don't know if he got in his feelings or what happened, but then he starts going a little harder, and I'm like, oh, man. Next thing you know, I woke up hitting the wall. The man hit me so hard, I, I fell into the wall. And, like, Lily, everybody stopped and, like, looked over, and, like, I was, I was like, it was like a flash knockout. And, like, he was big. He's, like, 200 and some pounds, you know, like. And so then I just had to realize, like, some men, you know, have egos, especially once uh, a female starts, well, touching them a little bit. They don't like that. So. Me personally. Or, like, uh, I've been taken think... down twice now by two other boys in I'm... the MMA community. So that's what they do, too. They'll, like, you'll start touching them, and then they'll take you down. They'll just double leg you out of nowhere. And you'll be like, what happened? They'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. It was a reaction. Like, a reaction to getting kicked? <laughs> like, what? Uh, right. You feel me? Like, uh, <laughs> I used to say the same thing, man. I promise you. I used to say the same thing. I'm like, hey, man, I ain't stupid. Y'all ass did that shit on purpose, bro. Yeah. And, like, I try to buy past it. So I try to really buy a passion because like I'm a real respectful I'm a real respectful respectful guy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Like I'm a respectful guy and all and all, but like when people try to, you know, do certain things in the gym, I'm like, bro, I ain't stupid. Like you did that on purpose. <laughs> and cause we all like especially with especially for the ones that actually train consistently, control their muscles, they know how to do certain things. So for you to just, it's a problem. Yeah, yeah, for real. Like for real. Call your other grand. But nah, like for real though, man. Like I, right, some more questions. I got more, more questions. I got more questions for y'all, man. I got. I'm, I'm here, even though. I, Okay. Up. I got I got these questions now, you know. So, do you guys think that I is there a, is there a, is, is, do you feel like is it people holding you to a higher status in the game, or do you guys like feel that way? Like, is it harder, or is it like like an issue to certain, certain to a certain extent that uh? people look at you in that way or does it bother you guys or do you guys in, are you guys in your own lane when you, you know when you get events or do you guys like certain stuff that get you there or get you out of that mind frame or look at it differently like you know so you got some people that hold you guys to a high standard of course you know what I'm saying but does that psych you guys out or does it bother you it, is it a concern you know I think that um, it's like a uh, it's like different levels in the kickboxing community and so like we've been exposed to like the world level and to be honest like it feels like we're not there yet and so like we're always like I think the expectations we put on are mostly come to ourselves from ourselves like we just feel like we we've seen this like the highest level of the highest and we're not there yet so like we just want to be there and like every loss or every every time we don't do do what we you know set out to do it's like another notch. Like, are we like, are we ever gonna be there? Are we ever gonna be good enough? So like, we're. I feel like we put a lot of that pressure on ourselves. Like, we just, we just want to be great, and we want to, we want to go back to Europe and compete again, and we want to do all these things. But we know, like, we know what it looks like there, and it's like, it's you know, kickboxing is, is big in world in the world, you know, and like we know we're not there yet. So I feel like we put a lot of pressure on ourselves to like. Yeah, that's why. I think 
I think I put a lot of pressure on myself and I allowed like I everyone always expects me to do great at a fight like everyone's like oh you know Lily's gonna do great Lily's gonna perform well my coaches you know my family so I it did psych me out a lot that people in the community having expectations of me and we train everywhere so I don't just have local people watching my journey I have people all over the U.S. Um, watching my journey so it, that the expectations really did get in my head in my early career until I went to Bosnia and uh, I fought in Bosnia and I realized that like the local fights and the tournaments like they're so small compared to the big picture and these girls overseas are fighting every weekend and they don't have Facebooks and people aren't live streaming their fights and saying like oh she did she's gonna do great like they do it all the time so when I went over there like it was kind of like a pressure relief like I'm this big right now and I have such a big journey. Like, don't worry about any of the pressures. Just get, get rounds, get amateur fights. That's all that matters is just getting in there. So I think that it, it did affect me in the beginning, but less now. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. That's, that's a true statement. I was told that as an amateur too, like I was only, I started my career in 2013. So like, I was 11 and six as an amateur and I only, I was five and two in kickboxing. So like, I thought I just did something in my life. Cause like, I was in a little position where I was just like, it's go time. Like I ain't got time to really wait on nobody. I'm still in a sense young, but old in a way. If I yeah. really want to view it. And you know, I was like, I was so sight on like hooked on belts. Like I want a belt, I want a belt, I want a belt, I want this belt. But I'm doing it so much, it's going to be so many more opportunities out there for belt. So really don't trip off of it. Just work towards, you know, getting it, but just keep doing it. So in a sense, what you guys talking about is definitely true, man. Like, for real, for real. Like, I feel you on, them, on some of them tips, you feel me? But we all do have different journeys and different point of views on stuff, you know? I feel like belts in the U.S., like, it's – there's a lot of hyped amateur fights over here. Like even just amateur kickboxing fights, like we train for six weeks and like you got fight posters and you're selling tickets. But like when you, when we went overseas, like they just fight <laughs> and it's just, and they do it all the time. So it's like, they fight each other. There's, you know, there's a lot of girls. Like they doing it like Yeah, so it's like, they don't have all the added all the, I mean, they have pressures, but it's different. You know, they don't have the Facebook posts, the, oh, who, who's going to win percent on Instagram type thing. Like, they just they just fight. All right. Yeah, I was like, okay, okay so, I like, question. When, I went to, when I went to Bosnia, the girl I lost to was from Turkey. She was, she was ranked number one in the world. She had 80 professional fights. And, like, when you look her up online on social media, you can barely even find her. It's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, true. That's very true. It's very true. <laughs> like me, I'm mild, man. Like I could I do hunger. Like, see, that's right now, in a sense, I'm um rebuilding the fight career, but it's just like the knowledge of trying to like the fighters I fought, I didn't just fight them because like, oh shit, I wanna fight whoever I wanna fight. I looked at I looked them up and studied them and like literally like just genuinely know in my mind and heart like i that person make a mistake i could win you know what i'm saying or i put this work in the right way i could definitely win this fight and the reason why i took some of the fights and but you guys see me out with you guys in the gym and bust my tail you know with all the uh elites out there and stuff so it's the proof is in the pudding type thing but it was exactly what you said like you know it is like it's people who fighters that you would even think of they don't have no type of information about them. It's like they don't even exist. Like they are live, they like they are living people, but they definitely don't like have no right. type of fight, fight, like no fight or profile, no nothing. Like, like who is this yeah. person, you know, around the corner, but all oh, actuality, this person got a whole fighter lifestyle background somewhere else. Yeah. See, for us though, like we're okay with that. We don't, um, we're trying to get to a place where we just, as amateurs, we fight 
the people that make weight and are high enough level to fight us. You know, like, yeah. we don't look up our fighters. We don't study their fights, none of that. Like, we show up, we make weight, we fight. And that's um, that's a mentality I wish more people had as an a amateur. Like, we're just out there trying to test ourselves to get the best. If you're good, I want you to be good. You know, like, you'll never see me make a post like, oh, I'm about to fight this bum. I'm about to win, can it run right through him. Like, I don't do that. Like, I don't want that fight, if that's the case. I want to be like, yeah, I'm about to fight this undefeated girl uh, where I'm about to challenge myself for the next level. You know, like, that's that's so important to me. Like, all my amateur fights should be high-level, challenging fights. Agreeable. Agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. That's how I feel. But you had just said, you touched something that I, uh, I, I kind of need to back off of, like, I, I do study too much. Like, I study too much instead of worrying about myself and just leading up to the fight. Like, I worry too much on my opponent and, you know, what the hell they might do and how they going to do it. Or I seen something that they did and I'm too hooked on that. I need to really reevaluate and not, ugh. Because, like, as an amateur, I didn't I didn't know who I was fighting until I got into town for weigh-ins. So when I got to town, I'm like, oh, you fight him. Woo! The guy that's over there, like, with his legs crossed by the window and with his head out the window. I'm like, I'm fighting that dude? Like, I mean, there's obviously fight footage that we study. I think we leave a lot of that to our coach, uh, JP Mattis out of the Wollaston. He's really involved. Oh, he's so amazing. We get so much one-on-one -on -one time with him. Uh, but he, you know, we he gets a name and we don't question it. He makes a game plan and we follow it and... There's a lot of a lot of trust there in that relationship. Yeah. So I I you know for me, I feel like well there's two things I would say. Number one, I think as a pro it's probably a little more important to become familiar with who you're fighting with because that's your paycheck on the yeah, line. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, for me I'm just an amateur. I'm just trying to get experience and find my holes and fill them. You know. Um, but second, I also and a lot of people don't know this about me. Like I'm super anxious sometimes, and like if I start watching my opponent, I feel like all I see is the good stuff they do. I'll be like, oh man, she's nasty there. Like oh shit. And then by the time I fight her, she's like this like blown up monster in my brain. So like I don't do that to myself. Like why, I, there's no point in that. You know I don't want to make her something that she isn't. So instead, I just want her to be the person across the cage and trust. You know, show up and trust myself and see what I got. You know. We need to talk more because y'all just gave me some advice, like, for real, for real. Like, mentally, I'll be like, that's probably the issue. Like, I know who I'll be fighting. I'll be over. Your, your opponent is your mind in there. Her but, all right, so. Ooh, okay. So, all right. Both of you guys. This question for both of you guys. What? I got to ask this question. But what music do you guys listen to or what get you guys in the groove leading out to the, to a fight? Like, you know, do you got a favorite song? Do you got a favorite praise? You know, what what get y'all in the song? Yeah. Right? <laughs> do y'all got a y'all got a y'all got a hand? Uh, got a song no, so, I don't really have a certain song, but I I just I grew up so I grew up in Joliet, like outside of Chicago and I just have always loved hip hop and I, I you know I'm really I actually really love like more like classic mm -hmm. 90s hip hop but um but as long as I'm training to something that's got a good vibe like right now I got this I'm creating my little uh I, I really like Lil Dirk I'm making a little Lil Dirk playlist and um I got you I got you, you know, I got Polo G and like all them like I like that so. okay you same whatever's on her playlist but I also get hyped to some Cardi B. Man, nah, 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 nah. She's don't get a confidence I wish I had. Uh, yeah, I'm married, though. So, like, it gets to a point like, nah, I don't want to listen to this. I want to listen to this. Uh-uh. Yeah, I was going to uh. say, Lily, Lily likes a little more um, uh, uh, pop music, too. So, it just depends. Like, I don't know if you, you yeah, probably haven't been around Lily enough to know that she's got, like, these different people inside of her. And so, like, so, Bro. <laughs> like, Sometimes she's the princess, like I'm the princess, and sometimes she's the motherfucking princess. Like <laughs> the story of my life right now. It's either I got a mermaid or I got a, a something. I don't know. Like I go through the same thing, but I got a mermaid. That's all I got. That's all I know. Have, have you ever seen Lily's like fights live? Like for real? Like in the back, she's like super nervous. She'll be like, you know, pale and scared. 
And then all of a sudden, like, it'll be time to walk out. And I've seen my wife, like, be so nervous. She, like, throws up. And then it's time to walk out. And all of a sudden, she's, like, steel-faced, like, goes out there, like, jumping around and shit. And, like, she's just a monster. And that's how she is in life. Like, I swear. Oh, yeah. Like, some days she's, like, the pretty girl that wants to do her hair and makeup and she's, you know, uh, listening to her, her pop music. And someday she got like Cardi B on and got an attitude. <laughs> Boy, it's not like we live in the same kind of household. You just got to be on. I got a mermaid. You feel me? Like, cause that just sounds a job. Yep. Tell you the same. Tell you the same. Sounds crazy. But man. <laughs> Uh, let me see. What's another question I got for you guys? All right, so Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. fighting tonight. Who y'all got? They're kind of fighting. Whatever. <laughs> you, said, uh, you, said, you said what kind of fighting? No, Mike Tyson I said, and Roy, Roy. I said, I said they're kind of fighting. That's why I said whatever. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I don't know. Do y'all think it's going to go to decision? Do y'all think it's going to be, like, just a show? Someone's going to knock one of them each other out on accident. Look, we, I we think get somebody enough gonna... chance to know that sparring, like, they're basically having a sparring competition, so. It's yeah. not going to be good. It's going to really fuck y'all ass up if they come out with some head gear on. <laughs> they probably will. Like, y'all want to, I'm like, why are you playing? I'm like, why y'all playing, bro? Y'all should have just fought heads up. They both look out of shape, though. Yeah, they do. They look cool. good, but like, they look good, but they look like they out of shape. They look like Mike Tyson and both Roy Jones look like he just said, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> Period. Mike Tyson is like, shit. I'm oh, Mike Tyson. <laughs> for real. But, man, I appreciate like, you guys. But for real, though, all the money they're about to make, like, it doesn't I would matter. do that shit, too. I, yeah. It don't matter what anybody says at the end of the day. If you have an opportunity to make money like that, why not? You know. <laughs> Hold on, right quick. I gotta be a butt white, right quick. Why did you? You know, one time because... me and Lily did. Wait, what? I mentioned yeah, you because I wanted you to come tune in. That's why I mentioned you. But I mean, it's just somebody on live just talking to me. It's just oh, okay. something. Let me know. That's why it just me be, be you know how I am, man. But man, all right, so let me see. Y'all got any more y'all got any questions, you know what I'm saying? Y'all got anything y'all wanna say before, you know? Yeah. No. We appreciate you bringing us on, that's cool. Yeah, what you about to do next? So who's who you about to talk with next? Sure, I might I might I might have her on her show, sure, you know. She a busy person, she famous, you know what I'm saying? I can't I can't make the famous person all at least appreciate y'all coming on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can't complain. Sure. I can't but I'm trying to get her on here. Uh, I ain't got nothing to do. I'm going to probably chill for the rest of the day. You know what I'm saying? Get back to the program Monday. Did you have a good but, Thanksgiving? Uh, did, you said, did I? Yeah. Yeah, we had an awesome one, man. We just kicked it, you know, spent time, smoked, you know, ate some good food, you know, loved my wife. Other than that, really didn't do too much of nothing for real. That's what's thankful. You know, just contemplating on this fight career stuff because there's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now. I'm just, ugh. It's so crazy. Yeah, I know you saw my whole card got canceled. I was supposed to fight on the 5th. The whole fight card got canceled. It did. <laughs> but we got a lot of stuff coming up. We have, um, so we will be competing. We got an IKF tournament in Georgia, January 2nd. Um, then we are fighting the um, Waco Team USA Nationals in Delaware at the end of February. And then we just got a fight offer um, to fight out in Mexico in April. So we'll be fighting out in Mexico in April. Lily is fighting the uh, – what, what's – Oh, okay. Oh, we can't, I guess we can't announce it yet. So, but she's got a big fight coming up in Mexico. I'm, I'm probably going to be fighting out there too. So we got a busy 2021 planned. So we're excited. Okay, well, I got some. Matter of fact, I got some more questions. Just so like, you know, the, you stretch it out some more. All right, will you guys? Are you guys gonna do MMA? Lily is. So I've been waiting for an opponent for five weeks. No, I uh, I put in for December fifth MMA, but um, yeah, it got canceled. But they unfortunately didn't have any luck finding me an opponent locally or within driving distance. So, um, 
you know, I have a lot of kickboxing goals set out for this next year. I really want to do World Games 2022. Um, so that's a huge goal. Like, there's – that's a – it's something that I will definitely have to spend all of my time doing. But in the meantime, I'm working on my wrestling. I'm working on my jiu-jitsu um, under MOP at the Wolves Den and Coach Cornell. Um but once I once I hit my kickboxing goals, the switch it'll be there for me. Like I'll be ready. Um, just now, I know. Yeah, finding her an opponent has been challenging. She's probably. I mean, honestly, she might just have to travel to fight somebody else yeah. in their hometown. You know, fight <laughs> a hometown girl because it's gonna be. It's it was really her MMA debut, but she got twenty five kickboxing fights. You know, that's that's hard. It's gonna yeah, it really is. But it's gonna be that way. Y'all. Yeah, might have to go out to the east because that's why I think oh, sure. that's why I think majority of a lot of kickboxer are kickboxers are at. But they everywhere, but like I don't know. Like I, I think a lot of them in the east, like up in Maine and stuff, you know. Or like New York and shit. I don't know. Well that's another challenge with women is like if you look at women's well, it's getting better, but if you look at women's amateur MMA, they don't really have a lot before they go pro. Like most girls will have five or six fights, maybe, you know, seven or eight, and then go pro. So there's just not a lot of – I probably – yeah, there's not a lot of high-level MMA girls out there. They go amateur, and once they get high-level, they go pro right away. So I, I'm i assuming that I will probably not get a lot of amateur MMA fights. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm going to say it was – you you guys are awesome. You guys to stay with. Cause I every time I seen you guys, y'all put a little fear in my heart. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, oh, yeah. you know. It's okay. We like you. I had to shake myself up real quick before I get into the gym. I'm like, I right, y'all get me the like y'all get me the the yeah. It's good vibes, but it's like that. I right, we heard we gonna we we hear about our business. We here to learn some shit. We here to do our job. We here to be better in our field and craft and our art. You feel me? And like, I love people that does that shit. I respect people that move like that because, you know, this this is not a joke. This is not a game. We can't hurt Wait, ourselves. Wait, say it again. Say it again. This is what? This is not what? A joke. This is not a game. This is not make-believe. This is not Thank none you. of that. None of it. Because I tell my wife faithfully, I, I, even, if, even if, like, like, I put my life on the line for us. You know what I'm saying? I put my life on the line for, my, for my, myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? I put my life on the line just to make my life better, to do something better in the future or do something to invest in things in the future. You feel me? Like, it's it's deep. And for you guys to be together and to understand that it's the same thing, man, y'all y'all, y'all the pow most powerfulest couple I could see. Thank you. Yeah. For the comp, you feel me? And, <laughs> that's and, awesome. Like that's for real, for real. Because like, bro, like I swear, like when I was talking to the uh, to the person you fought, I just say that person because I don't <clears throat> no more what that person. You know, it was like too much envy. You know what I'm saying? And I felt like if I shine, you shine, and especially if we're in the same field, why not? Yeah, but like we all grow and learn, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, stuff, yep. different sure. strokes for different folks. You feel me? But you know, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you guys for being here. Yep. I appreciate Thank you guys you. For talking with me. I appreciate you for some cold facts. You know, um, mm -hmm. I'm gonna hit you guys up and we're gonna talk some more later. Uh, happy holiday! I'm glad all you right. guys. I appreciate you guys, man. I Thank get you guys. You. All right. All see right. you later, Bye. Later. Man, what's happening? Man, bro, that was awesome. That was powerful to me, man. I appreciate my homies, Liz, and Lily for coming, for coming through and showing me some love. I got Miranda Mavericks on the end. She's waiting. She's waiting to bring that self Oh, Ian, man, I feel good to even try to even get Miranda Maverick to come on in here, bro. Like, if y'all didn't see her video, bro, I wish I could show y'all. Like, she, a bitch knows, like, ugh. like, ugh. like the bitch knows, like, ugh. like, but yeah, man, it's official, official. Like, let me see if I can do this shit real quick, man. Like, 
it's real around here, man. Like too cold TV, man. I have Miranda Mavericks coming on, man. Bro, I thank God for every opportunity for this, man. Y'all the coolest. I'm doing this live. Well, maybe in my room, you know. I don't know. But man, <clears throat> this is too cold TV, man. I got Miranda. Fear the Maverick from the UFC. She will be in live soon. Hey, man, in the meantime, between time, let me get y'all turned up. Back 
disrespect. And then you fight again. When you I fight again, just pray for your kids and I'll get a good contract sooner or later. I'll fight sooner or later. You feel me? You feel me? Yeah. When did you fight? When did you fight again? When do I fight again, you mean? I fight maybe sooner or later, you feel me? Um let me see something. One of y'all, two times for the fakers. They made him in the dark, made him in the shine. Look, I said some cookie call DJ. You think I did a little repeat? Everybody's free, free niche. Not too much. Been busy this morning, but tried to find time for it. Glad it worked out. <laughs> if, if I could, if I could, you know, if I could, man, it's all love, man. I appreciate it, though. Thanks. No problem. No problem. Man, like for real, though, man. How's your how How was your holiday? It was good. It was good. Didn't get to spend it with family this time around, but hopefully next year. Too busy with school this year. Word, man. What you what you what you take? What do I take for school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Industrial you want psychology. I'm getting my PhD right now. Check you out. Check yeah. you. Out. <laughs> hey, I, I wish I would have got into all that too. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> 
But hey, um, I seen you was in in, in Victor, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. And then, like at the Invicta, you you got your contract this year into the UFC. Mm -hmm. Man, how like how was that? And like you know, if you would mind, give a little something if you can. About yeah. Oh, so, around beginning of June, I think it was, is when I got the call to the UFC. Um, they offered me a four fight contract. I, I took it right away. I had had previous offers that just didn't work out, whether it be a short notice fights or a one fight offer. I just didn't want to take. Um, finally waited for the right one, took it in June, was supposed to have my debut, I think it was June 27th, got all the way to Vegas for it, um, didn't pass one of the medical exams for my eyes, found out that I had two retina surgeries that were needed, both my retinas were torn, and um, yeah, yeah, went and got taken care of, took me a couple months to recover after thinking that I was never going to fight again, and luckily got to make an even better debut in October on the biggest card of 2020. Man, hey, I'm gonna just say this. Like, I'm pretty fluent with my elbows my, myself. Like, you know, you see, this the eye one, you know, I got it. <laughs> but, like, bro, like, I, right, so I, 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 I had an uh, injury to a nose. I had a hematoma. I got punched, got clipped. But, dude, you, you just said, forget it. I'm, I'm with this. I'm with this. Like, I'm just gonna slap the nose, bro. Like, how was it in that moment when you just caught it, like, you know, because y'all was standing there, like, you, like, y'all was throwing them, and I respect you, too, even more, because, like, you throw your hands, like, you you let them go. Yeah. And well, the fact that you stood in there with her, and you was banging it out with her, like, yep. caught it with that elbow, like, explain that, please. Well, I threw four different elbows. Um, the first three were the same one, so... Uh, the first one I threw, I could tell caught her. She would duck her head down as she was punching, and I knew that straight up the center would work pretty well. So I tried it the first time, connected, but didn't hit super hard. Second time, I set it up a little bit better, clipped her real, really hard, um, but it didn't slice her open. And then the third one just hit right on the mark, right in the center of her nose, cut her open. And then um, right after that, I actually threw a downward slicing one and caught her on the side of the nose, too. Um, and um, her nose became a target after like my second punch because her nose started bleeding. Her lips started bleeding the first punch I even threw at her, and then her nose started bleeding the second. So after that, it just became a, a target point, and my coach was encouraging me that the elbow would work. I already touched her once. Keep trying it. Keep trying it. And so I did. Man, her nose became de <laughs> decapitated. She became a zombie. I'm like, I'm like you know, I understand, but like, I'm like, bro, no, nah, I don't even know how you're breathing. You feel me? Like, it, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, like, I'm having a, I have a problem with my phone. You mind, like, if I exit real quick and come right yeah. back in this? All right. Um, you guys, stay tuned. Apologize, I'm having a little technical difficulties. Uh, I'm, I'm hitting right, right back. Okay. All right. <sighs> <laughs> Sorry, you guys, man, we are back. I had some problems, some difficulties. Had to, uh, yeah, get Instagram together. You feel me? <laughs> so, yeah. I had Miranda, Fear the Mavericks. Fear the Maverick. I, I, man, I'm just, I'm be too, I'm too. I'm just moving fast, and it's early in the morning. Family time still, man. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, sorry for that. It's okay. It's working now? But, so, sorry to say it again? I, I said, is it working now? I got about 15 more minutes-ish. All right. <laughs> if you, even if you had two more minutes, I would have been cool. All right. Know? Good to you. I, I'm thankful and I'm blessed that you're even right. talking to me. You feel me? Like, you know. All right. Thanks. But um, <laughs> since being in the, uh, since that happened in um, the last fight, how... Has been the momentum building up to your next fight and everything. Uh, 
a lot. I think the exposure has been more than ever before, for sure. Like um, the first two weeks after my fight, I like couldn't even keep up with the interviews. Um, school has been nothing but going lately, though. I'm waiting for my finals to kind of get over with before I take another fight right now. So uh, early December, I was available. And now um, it's getting to the point where I'm like, probably January, it looks like is going to be the next offer. I've been waiting for a matchup and I'm just waiting for the call. Um, but I'm ready for the next one, you know, even if it's a top 15 opponent or something less, I'll take it either way. Um, I'd like a top opponent, but the problem is I'd like paid more to fight those top opponents. You know, I'm, right now, uh, because of the way my contract works, it only goes up so much and they'll be getting paid. A lot of those girls would be getting paid. I do for losing even when I win. So maybe even a couple under my belt that are like newcomers to the division, work my way up and then uh, start fighting those top girls as soon as I can start getting money for it and renegotiate my contract. Yeah, man. Um, hey, I'm rooting for you. I fuss with you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm watching it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All of it's a progress. Really. I apologize if my a little frizzy or whatnot. One second. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, it's probably my stuff for one day the other. I'm sorry if it is mine. Oh man. All right. So let me get these questions out the way so I can let you go back to your training and everything. I'm sorry for that. Nope. It's all good. I had some of my friends from my local, uh, the local soccer here in St. Louis in the Midwest. Like, you're, you're from Missouri, right? Yes. All right, so I know some females that's in uh, St. Louis or whatnot. They would dress on for you. They're a couple. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I asked these same questions to them. Okay. And I'm going to ask you real quick. Uh, got my little. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Do you think it's harder for women to break through in the UFC or just in general in sports? I think it's much easier for girls to get to the UFC than uh, for guys, honestly. Um, we have way less competition. I can see that just by going to different gyms. There's one of me trying to compete in my gym, one female, and there's 20 guys trying to compete in my gym, and five of them will be world champs. You know, it's 120th of the competition for me out there, if not less. Um, I ran through the amateur division within like a year. Guys have to work their way up, I feel like, a lot slower and they have a lot more fights that they have to take and a lot harder competition um yeah there's a lot more obstacles that i face than them within the gym and things of that sort but as far as getting to the ufc i would honestly say i have an easier road than most most men <laughs> next question <laughs> next question <laughs> Because, like, bruh, like, it's, it is grinding teeth for a brother. Like, mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, I have plenty of guys that are, like, my friends, my training partners, and I watch them, and I'll be like, yeah, they can kick my butt, but they're just an average amateur, you know? <laughs> I'm like, it's a, it's a lot harder for them. It's a lot harder. It's easy to stand yeah, out among man, girls just, I, lifting and training, you know? I'm the Every trying to do the best. Hey. <laughs> I ain't been, I ain't been, I, I ain't been taken down by a few good females, so I ain't gonna even flex, you know. <laughs> but I, my next question is, what made you want to fight? Uh, started out as a self-defense venture, honestly. Started Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, fell in love with it within a couple weeks. Um, I loved the feeling of being this smaller, young female at the time, and I could go in there and literally beat up grown men just with technique, and I just fell in love, grew a passion for it. My dad had kind of raised me to do that kind of stuff and given me a background in jujitsu and wrestling more so. And uh, I saw my first set of amateur fights that were local and saw girls fighting and saw how honestly crappy they were and decided I wanted to give it a go because I thought I could be better than that. That's what's up. Yep. I <laughs> My wife says she's a fan. <laughs> uh, I get it anytime, like with me, like even if like, I, when I do my studying on certain fights and I stumble upon you or what like that, I get I get her help because she actually cornered me in some of my fights. So. Okay. 
you know, like I had to let her know who certain people are or whatever like that. Or, you know, mm -hmm. you know the fight world and how things go with the couples and trying yeah. to let, you let your spouse know, like, yo, nah, bro, like, be that, <laughs> leave that be, let, mm -hmm. let that person a little, leave that, you know, you know, you know. Uh-huh. But, um, all right, my last question, <laughs> do you think being a woman in the field, let me see. You hold, yeah. Do you feel like being being a woman in the field that we are in, or that you know that we do oh, in the fight, do they hold you to a higher standard? Um, yes, but I think that's gym by gym is where it differs from. I know that for me at my gym, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily just being a woman. I'd say it's because of my competitive level. It takes a lot more for me to progress within the gym, like even um, jujitsu, like my belt level and stuff. Um, I have to what, be beating up different things for me to progress within that you know, because my coach holds me to this higher standard than most of the other people within the gym. Um, and then also just uh, myself, I guess. I hold myself to a high standard. I have these people looking at me as a role model and things, so I have to make sure that how I treat people, how I act in, in life in general um, holds up to um, that standard. Let me see I think. Um, are you there? Oh no. Uh -oh. oh no. I'm here. You also. Are you there? Can you hear me? Uh oh. Hello. Are you there? Are you there? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? You you can't hear me? Uh I I'm for that exit and come right back. Hold on. Uh sorry you guys. If you could hear me, throw up some thumbs, you guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know. Hey, how you guys doing? Hello, 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 hello. Two Co TV with Miranda Mavericks, man. Thank you guys for tuning in. We having technical difficulties. Sorry for all that. I'm trying to bring her back on. If not, uh, that's all. That was all the time I had with her because she is a busy, busy, busy woman. Busy, busy, like busy woman, like for real, for real. All right, cool, 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 cool. So what does it mean? Let's see if I can get her back on, you guys. Then we'll be wrapping it up. <clears throat> Hold on, Hold on. Later, buddy. Appreciate you for coming through. I guess it's some. Oh, man. Hey, hello. Hello, hello, you guys. Are you guys hearing? Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Uh, if you guys ha are hearing me very clearly, can you please uh, throw some thumbs up? I'm having like a lot of technical difficulties, and I know she's busy, and I do not want to hold her up. But, you know, I just had to make sure, you know, everything's going well and going right. If you guys can hear me, please throw up some thumbs, you know. You cool? Yep, I can hear you again. 
<laughs> I'm like, bruh, I'm like, no, no. <laughs> but yes, um, all right, so athlete to athlete, uh, combat fighter to combat fighter. That's how I look at it, even though we were both martial, martial artists. You know, um, is there any advice for anyone that's watching that you would give to anyone that's watching? I apologize, you know. Yeah, um, do you want a portion or just life in general? In general. Okay. Um, in general, um, I'd say one of my biggest things that may be controversial is it's good to be a quitter sometimes. Um, and stuff in life that doesn't matter so much, you know, if there's stuff you aren't, aren't good at, or that's not your passion and stuff, time, don't waste money doing it. You've got dreams out there that you can achieve that are practical and you need to focus on those and go after those things. I've probably been one of the biggest quitters I know at like different sports through life at different, uh, career goals and things. And I've had to take a step back a lot and look at life objectively to make sure that I'm reaching the end goals that I dream of, you know, to live at home with my family, to um, be successful. It takes a lot of um, personal insight yourself to see what you really want. True. Yeah, I believe in that. It really does. Like, for real, like, I'm like, I get, I get, sometimes it's, it's a little, uh, like, it gets, it gets there sometimes because, it's like, you really try, like, to please everyone and then you please yourself, you know what I'm saying? So, that's a strong, strong minded person. <laughs> Thanks, appreciate it. Uh, just, uh, I need, I gotta go in like a minute if you wanna. I know, we're finna, we just trying to wrap it up right now, you know what I'm saying? All right. Cause I, to do some stuff myself. Right. Uh, everybody, your ad handles, you know, or mm -hmm. any other thing you want to promote before we get off the live, that would be awesome, man. Yeah, well, I've got all my sponsors kind of on my page, on my link tree. Um, if you guys go look at my Instagram, it's the more popular social media. It's at Fear the Maverick underscore H-O-M-T. If you type in Miranda Maverick, you're probably going to find me on any of it, too. I'm pretty much the only one out there. Um, Twitter, at Fear the Maverick, and then uh, Facebook is Miranda, in quotations, Fear the Maverick, um, is my athlete page. Um, I'm usually pretty good at getting back to fit as long as you aren't uh, creeping or anything. I got you. Um, I've got merchandise for sale. I got autographs. I got masks. I got um, shirts, all kinds of stuff. So hit me up and keep up to see when my next fight is. I'm hoping to get news soon. Boom, <laughs> man. I'm over counting down these minutes and stuff. But, <laughs> hey, man. Me personally, as a uh, up and coming fighter, you know, man, you you are definitely an inspiration to me. You know, what I'm saying, got me working on this elbow game a little bit more. You know, I love you. Woo! You're awesome. All right, you know. <laughs> hey, man, I, I can't wait to see you in the UFC. You know, I'm working hard as hell to get there. So, you know, you know when I do. I'm going to get that photo. Be like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And tell your wife thanks. I appreciate it. And I'm honored to be on here. Thank you for having me. Oh, man. Appreciate you. Uh, you enjoy your evening. Hey, man. Appreciate all you guys for coming out, man. Blessings to all you guys. Happy holidays. Tune in to Two Coats TV next week or sooner. I'll catch you around. Thank you, okay, man. You Have a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. <laughs>